Loneliness is of two types. You have the loneliness when you are physically away from people, and you have another type of loneliness, which is a lot harder to cope with, which is when you are surrounded by people, but you really are alone. And I want you to imagine what Ibrahim felt like as his people, his own people, not an external enemy. His own people have kindled a fire for days and days and days and days that none of them could even come close to. And they were prepared to throw him into that fire. Not only that, but his own family was complicit. And not only his own family, but his father in particular, who Ibrahim loved so much and had called to Allah with the most beautiful of manners for so many years. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu experienced something like this in Ta'if. When he went out to Ta'if and he said it was the worst day of his life when he was made to walk through this narrow line where people threw things at him, cursed him, spit at him, punched him, insulted him. And he only has Zayd ibn Haritha in front of him as far as human support in those moments. And it was the worst day of his life Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Ta'if was a town outside of Mecca. These were not his people. And he had Zayd ibn Haritha with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibrahim Alaihi Wasallam, the scholars say, imagine the pain where it's his own people, his own family, his own father. And as Ibrahim looks out to the crowd, as he is stripped and put into this catapult to be thrown into this fire, he doesn't even see a sympathizer. He doesn't see someone who has told him privately that I've got your back. He doesn't see anyone that really supports him or that loves him or believes in him. He sees complete abandonment, complete humiliation. In those moments, some of the books of Tafsir, they narrate that Jibreel alayhi salam went to Ibrahim alayhi salam and asked him if he wanted help. And Ibrahim alayhi salam said, if it's from you, then no. But if it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then yes. And though those narrations are not in any book of hadith or found with any certain authenticity, there's a powerful narration from Ibn Abbas ta'ala He says, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. He said it was a word, a phrase that Ibrahim salam said when he was thrown into the fire. And it was the word that Muhammad وسلم, said when the disbelievers in Medina surrounded the Prophet وسلم, and his companions as they were about to be massacred in the Battle of Al Khandaq. And they said to them, These armies are coming from all over Arabia to eat you. They will consume you. You should fear them. And it increased the Prophet وسلم, and the companions in faith. They said the same thing that Ibrahim السلام, said as he was thrown into the fire. And the fire did not hurt Ibrahim السلام, because Allah removed the heat of the fire. And the army did not hurt the Prophet وسلم, and the companions because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the strength of that army. All it came down to was Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is the best. Allah is sufficient for me. And He is the best protector. He's the best one to dispose of my affairs. Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala, he actually had these words inscribed on his ring. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Some of the companions of Imam Malik rahimahullah, they asked him, he said, how come you only have Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil? He said, because what follows Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil is فَانْقَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسْهُمْ سُوءٍ that they returned with the favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His bounty, having no harm touched them. No harm had touched them. And so not only did Allah protect them, Allah gave them more, Allah increased them, as He did with Ibrahim alayhi salam, as He did with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, as He did with the companions, as He does with anyone who really calls out to Him and who affirms that Allah is the best protector and Allah is sufficient for them and Allah is the best disposer of our affairs. And a lot of times we don't really realize this until we're in a situation where we feel like we've hit our lowest point where we feel like we have no choice but to turn back to Allah. When all of the asbab, when all of the means of this world are taken away from us and we have no choice but to turn to Allah Al-Ahad, Allah the One. And 
it's really poetic because a lot of times you don't realize what Allah has given you in himself until everything else has been taken away from you. And that's why a lot of times uh, it takes time for us to really appreciate the power of a dua. Hasbun Allah means you have no one but Allah. Even if you have others, Allah is sufficient for you. Allah is sufficient for you. Ni'm al-wakil, Allah is the best disposer of our affairs. What that means is that even if you have others to support you in your affairs, even if you had no one to dispose of your affairs, even if you had no one to advocate for you, even if you had no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kafa billahi wakila, He is sufficient subhanahu wa ta'ala as a disposer of your affairs. You have to affirm with certainty that Allah is the best and Allah is sufficient even if you are distracted by the plentiful means around you or you are desperate because you have no means around you. Allah is sufficient for me. Allah is enough. And this is particularly powerful, by the way, when you are al-mazloom, when you are the oppressed one. Da'watul mazloom, the Prophet ﷺ said, the cry of the oppressed, there is no hijab, there is no veil between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if that person was a disbeliever, if they were calling upon Allah, alone without attributing any partners to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, I will support you. لَأَنصُرَنَّكِ I will support you. وَلَوْ بَعْدَ حِينَ Even if it comes after some time. But that's usually when we find ourselves falling into a place where we get to discover Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a powerful way. And this is something we train ourselves with so that when we feel the hardship of this world, whether it is the crushing power of an oppressor or the crushing tongue of a slanderer, we go right back to Hasbi Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil. Aisha radiallahu anha, we see when she was slandered in Medina and she looked around and she didn't find anyone to support her, she didn't find anyone advocating for her. In instinctively, she said, Hasbun Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil. She immediately remembered this remembrance Hasbun Allah wa Ni'mal Wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and He's the best disposer of my affairs. And just as Allah did not let Ibrahim السلام, down, did not let Muhammad وسلم, down, he didn't let Aisha radiallahu anha down either. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayat, ayat in her support and elevated her as a result of that slander. Dear brothers and sisters, there's a narration that's mawquf that stops at Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu. It's very powerful about making this part of our daily lives. And that's probably one of the things that we can interrogate ourselves with, with these du'as, with these remembrances, is that sometimes we wait for an extraordinary situation to make these extraordinary du'as that could transform our ordinary lives if we do them on a daily basis. Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, whoever says seven times in the morning and in the evening, Hasbi Allah, la ilaha illahu, alayhi tawakkaltu wa huwa rabbul arsh al -azim. Hasbi Allah, Allah is sufficient for me. La ilaha illahu, there is no God but Him. Alayhi tawakkalt, upon Him I have placed my trust. Wa huwa Rabbul Arsh al -Azim, and He is the Lord of the mighty throne. That if a person says this seven times in the morning, seven times in the evening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove all that distresses them. And you'll find in you know mental health books and classes that to deal with anxiety, they tell you to repeat certain phrases. SubhanAllah, here you have this guidance to repeat this phrase seven times in the morning, seven times in the evening. Hasbi Allah, la ilaha illahu, alayhi tawakkaltu, wa huwa rabbul arsh al-azim.